This video starts out just like any other Star Wars Lego movie by Batyard Productions. With the theme, slanted text, but not quite originally like the George Lucas Star Wars films. Ironically, we start out the same way like all with the Millennium Falcon and a bunch of star action pick flick, that sort of a thing. At first, it's hard to really understand what's really going on, as we just hear a bunch of random sound effects going all over the place, and it kind of gives you a bit of a headache when you when you're you know actually watching it. So the film's the this this short 28 minute film starts out pretty annoying, um, but it actually builds up interest as we go along, as we develop the scenes and develop the plot and the um, the climax and the conflict going on in the film. Hold on! Ah! We don't need it anyway! Ah! As we see Luke coming in, Luke is then landed on a random island where he is fighting a monster. Now this monster looks like 30, 20 billion times bigger than Lego Luke. So it's a little interesting how even though Luke is with the Force, how Luke, as this tiny little thing, could somehow manage to, you know, defeat this monstrosity. <laughs> that scene goes on for approximately five minutes, which you know, it's kind of interesting to know how we see um, a Lego somehow defeat this big creature. And it's almost kind of ridiculous in a matter of speaking. But, um, you know, we, we use the force to really um, understand and make some sense of this. We see Darth Sirius um, with his clone troopers. Now, the, the one thing about these Lego Star Wars um, films that is a lot better than, you, I have to say, is better than some of the traditional Star Wars is that there is ridiculous humor in them. And the other thing is the use of profanity. We are the pay for the stormtroopers. You fucking asshole. As we see Darth Sirius um, is talking to his um, apprentice and other um, uh, future leaders, um, how they're paying the stormtroopers. They're not actually clones, or they're not actually being enslaved to do this. They're actually being paid to do it, and being paid $2,000 an hour to fight the rebels. But one thing that's really, really good about these scenes is that they actually have legitimate um, of the original John Williams um, orchestra soundtrack that actually helps tie the tie this uh, Lego Star Wars film together. And we have the 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 sound effects of the lightsaber, so when Darth Sirius goes bananas, how we uh, we can actually make some sense of what's going on. And, you know, early on, here we are, like, one-third of the way done with the with the Lego Star Wars Return of the Lego. We're actually starting to make some sense here, what's going on. As we then see, Darth Sirius um, is able to capture Princess Leia, um, much like the original Star Wars. I'm in jail! I'm in jail! I am bored! On Chewie and Luke, they're all trying to rescue Princess Leia. From obviously this time to Darth Sirius and the Lego version and all that. And it's very, very interesting too because now we're seeing how Luke is in a different place, just like in Episode Five. It's like a, 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 an interesting mashup together of all the original Star Wars films into a Return of the Lego film. Later, as we see, as Darth Sirius is trying to create the ultimate weapon, the ultimate weapon to um, uh, turn um, Luke to the to the dark side. Finally, they're trying to get him to the dark side again. Um, that they create this machine that actually turns every living organism. Not only does that blow your mind, but then we go into the whole plot of Darth Sirius trying to blow up a planet. <laughs> 
<laughs> the joke is that he only separates the planet in half, and then later in the film we see he actually masters it to actually blow up a planet. And the sound effects in that, I might add, incredible. No, watch this. Oh my goodness! The Senate will not let you do this. Luke then lands on appears to be Yoda's home planet where he there looks to con con continue his training. And much like in episode 5 of the original Star Wars, Luke is trying to somehow um, become better with the Force. Interesting enough, we see Yoda get killed. This is why I say to that. And it's amazing how he gets killed by Luke himself, who then appears to go completely ape and turn to the dark side, in a matter of speaking, by killing the Master of the Jedi, which doesn't make any sense. As Han and Chewie then somehow manage to land into Princess Leia's capture chamber, they were able to rescue Princess Leia from Darth Sirius. Meanwhile, Darth Sirius is trying out his ultimate weapon to turn any living organism to the dark side. Darth Sirius does succeed with his knowledge, and he turns um, some random Lego into, into another dark villain. Come to me, my little apprentice. From now on, you shall be known as Dark Utini. He creates this villain called um, Darth Utini, or something along Tutini, something really ridiculous along the line. Utini. And then he just keeps yelling Tutini um, for like another two minutes straight. Um, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. So then we see Darth Sirius then talking with appears to be the head of the Senate. And apparently... This guy head of the Senate is just as crazy as they were in the prequels of the Star Wars. Just saying, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate. The Senate will get you. The Senate, the Senate, the Senate. Fuck the Senate. However, it makes it gets the point across that the Senate is just a piece of shit garbage and we don't really want to care about what the Senate has to say. What's then interesting is it appears that the whole thing just crashes. The whole video is just over. And we get, we get a bunch of fuzz, and we get the color bars, and the, the loud, obnoxious noise, and then you think, okay, this disaster of a video is finally over. However, we're only two-thirds of the way done, and we got another one-third of the, the return of the Lego to go. And then you realize, oh my god, I'm going to shoot myself in the head, because you really don't want to watch this somewhere. However, it keeps going, obviously, as I just said. And then Luke is finally made with this big... End thing of uh, trying to um, fight Darth Sirius, and then Utini is uh, also chiming in. Meanwhile, Darth Sirius blows up the planet finally, and the Senate gets thrown down the toilet. So it's a it's an interesting film. Um, I think that as we get to this end, we get the final big battle scene. Luke is just Lego Luke, that I might add, is just completely and utterly has the force stuck up his ass that he just keeps saying, The force! The force! The, f f f f the force! And again, really annoying. Almost as, more, almost as annoying as the whole Senate thing. But, you know, two, the Senate's gone, so now Luke has to fill in the gap of being annoying in the film. As the final, the final end battle between Lego Luke and Darth series is continuing to just go on and on for like five minutes straight, we then realize the end is finally here. And what the end is, is that Darth Sirius is able to manipulate Lego Luke into thinking that he is the greatest thing ever and saying, I have a, a box of fun for you. Lego Luke then uh, proceeds to this box of fun, as we know earlier in the film, um, that is the, the machine that turns any living organism um, into a villain, or to the dark side. What's interesting enough is when I first watched this, I was watching this at night with the lights off like any traditional movie. I had no clue what the hell was going on. I had to rewind and watch this last two minutes of the film over and over again just to finally cohere, just to make this somewhat coherent in my own brain. Maybe I'm retarded, but to me it was very, very unclear what was going on. Maybe because of 26 minutes of the 28, I was ready to just have you know my brain shot out of my skull that uh, I didn't really want to know what was going on. But I did. I rewinded and I watched like another three times through my recollection. Um, now I know what's going on. So. As this machine.
machine goes ballistic and turns Luke, Lego Luke, into a villain. He then is now called Darth Sinner. Very creative, I might add. And that is the end of the film. Now, some interesting things I didn't mention already about this fantastic film was that the special effects were pretty good. I mean, for a homemade film, they had good special effects, Good, they used uh, some interesting sound effects, um, they illustrate a lot of annoying parts of uh, some former of the original Star Wars and annoying parts of the prequels of Star Wars. Um, one of the things that I liked and I thought it actually kind of evolved a little bit in the Lego Star Wars Return of the Lego was that the shot types and it really it really it really is good how it isn't just a steady wide shot of just these two Legos just standing there. Obviously, they don't actually talk. They're, they're uh, we have a uh, After Effect um, voiceover going on for the characters. But it's actually kind of interesting because now we actually can see how we get some close-ups, some medium shots, and some wide shots um, to try to shake things up and try to keep the audience's attention. And I will, I will say that was one of my favorite things about the film that I, I did notice the, through my first watch of it. Um, however, when you watch this as a whole, and you really sit down, you watch the whole 20 minutes without pausing it, without stopping it, without um, getting a drink of water at all, you realize, oh my god, what the hell did I just watch? And a lot of a lot of amateur things, that's what you feel. Oh my god, how do I just watch this? But when you really, really dive deep into something and you really can pull out some really positive things like I did with Return of the Lego here, it makes you feel like, okay, it's a, it's a good starting point, now we can build off of it. Now, interesting enough, this is the third um, of, the, of the Backyard Star Wars Lego films, Return of the Lego. So I, did, I, cur I actually have not watched any of the, the previous or the following ones to this. So it's very interesting. It gives you um, an interesting scoop of maybe I do want to check. Maybe you want to check them out yourself. Maybe I want to check them out. Um, but uh, overall, if I had to give this a rating of one to five, one being the worst and five being the best, I'd give this a nice two out of five stars. Um, obviously, um, we're not judging it on like a like a big film thing as we're comparing like um, uh, um, the Last Jedi to this, or obviously, and just to let you guys know, I have not seen the Last Jedi yet, and I heard there's some stupid, ridiculous parts to that as well. So um, it can compare a little bit. Um, obviously, um, we don't see any of the Legos take off their shirts in this, or anything ridiculous like in the Last Jedi, or we don't see really awkward conversations going on. We just see some very raw motion of um, things going on. I don't think we're, I don't think. We we're gonna hear Kylo Ren ever say, "What the fuck's going on here?" Or that then it, that 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 then it, then it, then it, that 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 then it, then it, then it. And so, uh, interesting little thing there. Um, thanks for watching.